things that Jesus said in terms of instructing us or giving us uh, giving us direction on how life should be lived that they they're, they only they're only confusing at first glance. They're counterintuitive, as they say. They go against what what our sinful selves and our sinful world has told us is the way to get ahead and the way to go. But if you stop and think about them, then you realize that no, our better nature would send us in the same direction that Jesus would instruct us to go. His advice is practical, if you will. Although it's practical for the world, it's practical for the body, it's not necessarily best for selfish man. But for humankind, it is. Today we're going to Mark 10, verse 35. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am drinking or be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? And they replied, Well, yes, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called to them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as rulers lord it over them, and the great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to serve, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. All my life I have been living with the 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 concept in this sinful world that there are natural born leaders, that there are people that they're just because of their stature, because of their education, because of mostly physical, you know, that usually we elect the tallest president. Usually we elect the tallest candidate president. And, you know, we, we don't mean to, but it's, yeah, okay, that, he's taller. That must be the right president. We, we're, we're, we judge by human standards, and by human standards we think that there's some kind of natural born leader out there. That, oh, well, this guy was just born for glory, was, was born to be the leader. Jesus, if anyone, was born to be the leader. King of kings, Lord of lords, Son of God. And yet the book of Hebrews underscores the fact that though he thought it not blasphemy to consider himself equal to God, yet he emptied himself and became a servant. Emptied himself and became a servant. If that's the example, the example of a Messiah who the night he was betrayed, not only did he break bread and, and serve wine and and, and call to their attention the sacrifice that he would be making, he put on a servant's robe and washed their feet. And it's an example that you're to follow. And here, in another gospel, in another place, he is saying the same thing. You know, in, in our better days, in our better, uh, when, when we're in our right minds, we will think about this and and, and you can all remember having felt this same way, I'm sure, sometime in your life. You can all remember having felt the same way. And you had another word for it. You know, we're always looking at it and say, well, it's holy or it's biblical or it's Christian. And when we look at it from the real world, from, from, from childhood on, what did we call it? Fair. It's fair. It's fair. Well, so-and-so did all the work. So-and-so should be making the decisions. That's fair. This person has done the lion's share of the effort, the work. This person should be the one who gets the credit. That's fair. In the real world, things are often not fair. And we come up with excuses for why is it, why would we let things happen that are not 
fair. Well, you know, they, I mean, we, we've got all of these concepts of it's a, it's a personality type. It's a, it's a, it's an, and I have nothing against education, believe me, because to me, education is work. Education is effort. Education is service. Thank goodness my physician went to school for all those years and went to the internship for all that time. The, the, my physician, she put forth the work that it takes to be a physician. She put forth the work that it takes. So I'm not denigrating, I'm not denigrating leadership qualities that are earned. Many of you have earned leadership qualities. There are there are, are there are doctors in the room and and there are accountants in the room, and there are, there are people in this room who have put forth the work, who've earned their place. But that's what we mean by fair. It's earned. It's earned. Oh, Lord, well, we do whatever we ask for you. We got here first. We're the first ones to ask you. It's our turn. Lord, we're, you know, Mama said it was okay. There's another account that the word the mother came. The mother of the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus and said, I want you to do something for me. Are you kidding? You said your mother? <laughs> you said your mother, and probably in the whole story, without the without the kids, without things left out, she probably, they, Jesus probably said, you tell them to come talk to me. <laughs> I don't know how that worked, but we have those two accounts. And one of them, the, their mother, let my sons to sit at your right and at your left. We got here first. We win the lottery. We've been here for a long time. We really hey. like Jesus. Jesus said, no, it's just not mine to give. And then when the disciples got angry at him for asking, Jesus is kind of like, well, you know, I'm sure that you would have asked too. You know, I mean, you would have you would have said, I wish I'd got there first. I wish I'd thought of that. Yeah, I want to sit next to Jesus in his glory. It's not the way it works. Whoever would be great among you must be your servant. You know that those in power in the in the in the pagan world, those in power in the in the fallen world, lord it over them and 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 like to be called the boss and like to be called rabbi. Jesus said, "Don't call anyone on earth teacher, because you have one teacher, even Christ, and you're all students. Don't call anyone on earth father. You have one father, even God, and you're all sisters and brothers." You know, I um. There's a lot of opinions about Eugene Peterson's The Message. Uh, some would say, no, it's just not a good translation. You know, it's a real good commentary about every word in the Bible. And as that, I'd say Peterson has earned a place in literature. He has, he has rewritten the Bible to, to, as, a, as a minister, as a, as, a, as a congregational pastor. What does this thing actually say? What, what have I been able to teach or glean from all of this? And so when I look at Eugene Peterson's The Message, I don't claim that it's actually scripture or that it's actually gospel. However, sometimes I'll look at it and I'll say, well, that's what I thought as well. You know, I'm thinking, well, I think I see something here. And then I look at Peterson and say, well, he saw the same thing. Wow. So, I like the way he puts this. And I find that that's the situation that I find here is that is that because of the way he puts it, it 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 matches what we're trying to say here. James and John, seventy sons, came up to him. Mm -hmm. Teacher, we have something we want you to do for us. And Jesus said, Well, what is it? I'll see what I can do. Arrange it, they said, so that we will be awarded the highest places of honor in your glory. One of us at your right. The other at your left. Jesus said, you have no idea what you're asking. Are you capable of drinking the cup I drink? Of being baptized in the baptism I'm about to be plunged into? Sure, they said, why not? <laughs> Jesus said, come to think of it. You will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with my baptism. But as to awarding places of honor, that's not my business. There are other arrangements for that. When the ten heard of this conversation, they lost their tempers with James and John. Jesus got them together to settle things down. You observe how godless rulers throw their weight around, he said. And when people get a little power, how quickly it goes to their heads. It's not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. That 
is what the Son of Man has done. He came to choose not to serve, not to be served, but to serve. And then to give his life away in exchange for the many who are held hostage. In, in this family, in this church, in now, now we, have, we also have a sense of democracy. So it's not always, you can't always look at the one in charge and say, well, that's the hardest working person around. There, there's a lot of taking turns. There's a, uh, we, we select from the, from the leaders, from the people who do, all, who do work, and, and first this one will be, will be chair of the elders or moderator of the governing board, and then this one. And that's kind of the way things go here. There, there is some sharing of power. And the thing is that it's like, so how do you become a leader? Somebody came up to me one time and says, well, you know, I, I think I'd like to be an elder at this church, but, but I've heard that if you, if you nominate yourself, you don't get to be one. I'm saying, yeah, that's right. That's right. Because it's going to be a consensus. If somebody this should be an elder, then it's going to be obvious. You're going, oh, yeah, that person. That's somebody who, has, who, is, who is doing the work. I know that a lot of you have been asked to be elders, by the way, and you chose not to. So the rest of you, we can't judge who are the hardest workers by being the elders. There are some wonderful hardworking people here that don't want to sit in on a meeting. They don't want to, they don't want to, to add that to everything that they do. Some of the hardest working people in this church get no recognition. And so I want to recognize, you know, I, I won't recognize them by name because they don't want it. But I do want to acknowledge that there are people that work very hard in this church that deserve, uh, that deserve our praise. And they have been offered leadership positions and have chosen not to take them. So we can't judge who is the hard worker or who is being considered the hard worker by who is literally in charge. But to 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 it's it's like some it's it's like pursuing happiness. If you pursue the good of others, you'll be happy. If you pursue happiness itself, you're probably not going to get it. If you're pursuing leadership, you're probably not going to get it. But if you will work and serve and slave and help, then you will rise to leadership. It just comes natural. It's just fair. It's just fair. Very difficult. Very difficult to, to want. You know, I mean, I would, I would love to have a, I'd love to have a high position somewhere. Um, I'd love to have a, a huge pension. I'd love to retire early or at least take six, eight weeks off. You know, I'd love to have the big car. Uh, I'd love to have people that, you know, big, people waiting with my coat slippers and my, my cup of coffee and all this other stuff. You know, that'd be kind of cool. That'd be fun. But that's not what we're supposed to want as Christians. What we're supposed to be doing as Christians is we receive our praise from God. And then that way we don't need that recognition from other people. We don't need that. We are able to serve others knowing that, that, that Christ served others, that Christ emptied himself, knowing that our reward is in heaven. You know, this whole thing of don't, don't build your treasure on earth, but build your, your treasure in heaven. Your treasure is the relationships you build and the friendships you have and the, the, the love that you have for other people. That is, that's our treasure. <laughs> In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May we all be wealthy that way. And may we be leaders by being servants.